Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys actually not necessarily about Righteous Fire, uh, but about one of the newest league mechanics that came back known as Old Tomato or uh, Ultimatum. So Ultimatum is uh, was essentially an old league and it has replaced Metamorph this go around. It's basically like a circle mechanic very similar to Ritual where you go in and instead of it just being like one round, Ultimatum has technically up to like 13 rounds. Now, a lot of people don't really like Ultimatum because the problem that occurs, if you do Ritual, you know how you kill the mobs and then you end the Ritual and there's like a whole bunch of loot that's dropping. Same thing with like all the Incursion, you clear the Incursion and then a whole bunch of loot drops. Ultimatum, they have completely removed all of the loot from the actual monsters. Now, this is a pretty much a con. It's not really a pro, but I'll talk somewhat about a pro, but it's not really a pro. Now, the downside of this is this basically means for most endgame atlases, you are specking into things like wandering path and juicing map modifier effects. You are scaling quantity and rarity. None of these really work for ultimatum. I do believe the only thing that is affected by quantity and rarity in ultimatum is the catalyst drop. Now, the problem with the catalyst drop is I'm currently in SSF and I've probably done close to about 20 hours of ultimatum. And this is currently my catalyst stock. Um, <clears throat> so this is everything I have farmed. I think before I started ultimatum, I had one turbulent catalyst and I used about four fertile catalysts. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate a quick ultimatum on how I do it and kind of why I'm doing it. Now, Righteous Fire Chieftain is the newest flavor of Chieftain that I have been playing. And I have to say, I think it is a great ultimatum blaster. So the meta for me for ultimatum is basically scour and go. My boys in hardcore would appreciate this. Uh, normally, I'd be running T16, but I actually ran all my T16 maps, and the only thing I have left are corrupted ones, so we're doing Scour and Go because it doesn't really scale off anything. Now, this is a great way for you to actually use, like, all hands, covert stakeouts, and even, for example, Heist. I was also doing Essence on the Atlas for, like, at the same time, so I was grinding out Essences while I was doing Ultimatum. Works out pretty well. The other thing I will say that I also do on top of this is I add in Wellspring of Creation. Now, after this, I'm going to go ahead and showcase more of what I've found. But Wellspring of Creation basically makes it so monsters do less damage, but they have more life. This is fantastic for, uh, for Ultimatum Farmers, in my opinion, because Ultimatum kind of has really redonkulous uh, <laughs> amounts of damage in it. The mobs are kind of tanky, but... Ultimately, you just kind of need to survive the ultimatum, uh, unless it's a kill one, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. So I also forgot to put on ultimatum here, so hopefully it just spawned naturally. Let's go ahead and just peek really fast. If it didn't, I'm going to have to go poke over another map. Okay, here it is. Perfect. Alright, so essentially when you start here, you have like three modifiers you pick from. Now... There is this node here, Grueling Gauntlet, which means that you cannot pick the modifier, but you essentially get three more rounds, and those three more rounds have significantly better loot, I would imagine, because the deeper you go, the better the reward pool, but you can't pull a boss. So over here, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of explain the mechanics. So we have to stand in stone circles, so you want to pick modifiers that are good for you. Also, Raging Dead is broken. Um, I died to it with 90 max fire res with a ruby flask, so I never take this more than two. So let's get started. I'm going to take Monsters Have 50 Ellie res because I'm a Chieftain and it doesn't matter. Most of the time, I would say the good rewards show up on 7, 8, 9, and 10, somewhere around there. So over here, I actually take Blood Altar. I never take this. This is terrifying. You take 50% increased damage. Blood Altar is really good. It basically does nothing, especially with a build like this with Cloak of Flame. I mean, I could just stand right here and it literally does nothing. You can see the uh, heavy degen. So one of the other things about Chieftain RF, why I really like this is there are, is basically one item I would need to be somewhat immortal. So here I'm going to take, again, Fizz Dot. It doesn't really matter. A Defiance of Destiny on my amulet slot would basically allow me to completely AFK Ultimatum. Uh, with that being said, though, most of my damage for Ultimatum just comes from the Chieftain Ascendancy. So this is actually not that good of a belt. Usually the, the biggest problem I have with Ultimatum is you get a lot of double corrupted items, which is really cool. But the problem is rares don't have the like well rolled tag like some other league mechanics do so the chances of you getting good implicits on a good rare is basically impossible this is pretty much only good in my opinion for like unique items 
uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. The fire of burns so as we get deeper into the ultimatum, all of these modifiers will start to stack on top of each other, thus kind of like layering how difficult the monsters are. Thankfully, all of our damage, though, comes from... I can't actually pop it up to show, but it's the Explode on the Chieftain Ascendancy. The Explode basically does 500% of monster life. I don't know if it actually scales with Wellspring of Creation, because I know, like, Dead and Dead does not, but it doesn't matter because everything kind of just dies instantly. This actually synergizes very well with a couple of other mechanics I will talk about. There is an Ultimatum node on the tree that we take, which is... The round starts plus one, so on round 10, you're actually getting rewards from round 11. Um, but it shrinks the area by 3% every time. This is actually a buff to very tanky build to have Ellie Prolif, uh, because the smaller the area, the less you have to cover. So here we're going to take Monster Suppress, so it does not matter for us, really. Overall, I will say that in a Trade League environment, I think it's going to be hard to justify doing Ultimatum. Primarily because you need a really tanky build uh, to be able to clear this content. And I would say most builds are going to be a little expensive to get here. Thankfully, RF Chieftain doesn't really require much. So Chieftain is definitely a good, um, like a good in-between here. Uh, th there's really not much required for Chieftain to farm this. You just need good physical mitigation, which is not that expensive, right? Decent enough damage to just trigger your explodes and you're good to go. But other builds, it may be a little bit trickier because you're trying to balance both your damage and your survivability. And ultimately, in a league with Wisps, nothing is really going to compete with Wisp farming, unfortunately. So I feel Ultimatum came out at, like, the worst time. We have a league mechanic that is buffing monsters to make them drop more loot, but Ultimatum monsters don't even drop loot. <laughs> so it <laughs> couldn't have been the worst patch for it, right? D dreadful. So here's our round 10 reward. Now, it's actually not too bad, not, not that amazing. So for here, when you click this, you have a chance of spawning the boss. But I did not get a boss. Bosses are pretty rare. I've spawned, I think, eight bosses in total. Uh, I can go back and show my stash here, and we can count exactly how many we've done. Ultimately, I would say the use of Ultimatum. Uh, Ultimatum, I feel, has a, a bigger play in SSF, because SSF, you're finding a lot of random stuff. Um, you also have a chance to dupe rewards, which is pretty cool. You can dupe a lot of really... In my opinion, awesome stuff. I've had multiple divine dupes. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump back and kind of show you guys the rest of my ultimatum stuff. So over here, we talked about the catalysts that we have, right? Definitely one of the better features for SSF. Now, you can still get catalysts in other ways. For example, you could just run uh, delirium over and over and over. Delirium will sometimes pull, uh, I guess now, ultimatum rewards before it was metamorph. And then you could get catalysts that way. I don't think they've removed that, but that's an option. Then you can use Harvest over here to re-roll Catalyst to get a specific type. So that's what I used to do in the past, but this does not really bother me too much, so I'm a big fan of this. Also in Ultimatum, you get these things here called Inscribed Ultimatums. Now, you can spec this over here. Um, these have chance to be Inscribed Ultimatums. I'm not a super big fan of these, but there's some pretty cool stuff. So over here, most of the stuff I have I think is fluff. I didn't go through and look at every single Div card one because I know it's kind of a bit of work. But over here, I have some that are pretty good. So here is seven league step for a squire. Um, I don't know how realistic this is to run. It seems a bit sketchy, but still a cool chance at a squire in SSF. We got a lionized fall, which is the really cool bow jewel. Barracks respite, which is nothing special, but I like barracks respite on chieftain. And then over here, blood price. I don't know why I put this here. I don't even know what this is. So a lot of inscribed ultimatums. I have some as well for like divines, but I don't think the divine ones are really that special, right? But some some decent stuff now over here is where i guess more of the juices so i have farmed about 10 raw exalts from ultimatum from like i said about 20 hours and i have farmed exactly 18 divine orbs now, i've only died in three ultimatums so i'd say this is pretty good for me right uh, i'm not gonna say you get a divine every hour because that's not necessarily true i've had some where i found you know my best one was probably seven divines in just a few hours, and then others, you don't really get them for a while. But here we can tally our boss skills. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've actually found nine because I died on one boss. Uh, every time you kill the boss, you do get a unique. So some of the other cool things I found was uh, a badge of the Brotherhood. I got badge of the Brotherhood because I had one, uh, an inscribed ultimatum to trade as... Um, what was it that you need to trade? A singularity, and then you have to go do the event, and you can get a badge of the Brotherhood. That was pretty cool. 
I found myself a double corrupted cold iron point with 60% increased damage over time. A very sick find. Now, granted, it's lucky, but a good find. This is a good example of where double corrupting can be in your favor in Ultimatum, because I don't think it ever bricks the item. Here's another piece where I found a Namahu's Flame with supported by Fortify. I don't know if Namahu's Flame is good whatsoever, but just kind of something cool in between, right? Um, I found two Cloaks of Flame with reduced fire damage taken because it duped. Also pretty cool. Um, it's just straight technically better than my current one, so it is not too bad for finding uniques, but again, compared to Wisp farming right now, Wisp farming is going to find you more of everything overall. I uh, got really lucky here and found a jewel, but again, I can't really put this into the equation here. This jewel that we found from Ultimatum runs for... Uh, quite a bit. Um, this is basically like a poison SRS jewel. Would have been awesome if this duped, because then you could just put both of them in a Darkness and Throne. But again, just two, two random of items. Uh, I also farmed myself a cane of cool Mac because I was just doing betrayal while I was doing it actually pretty cool again not tied to ultimatum itself but pretty happy with this might be making a build so overall I have to say I am pretty happy with her where like ultimatum is I don't feel the rewards are nearly as bad as people make them out to be however I completely agree that it's not as fun to look at because it's too random so I think some cool things they could do for ultimatum is make it so there's a a keystone on the tree that makes it i don't know what the downside would be but basically you can look at two different rewards and you can pick one you want because there's sometimes it's just horrible like i'll give you an example on one ultimatum it was round nine and i was offered eight chisels and then it was round 10 and i was offered seven chisels and i was like why is the round nine <laughs> giving me more than the round 10 when the round 10 is more difficult so i would like to see some more stuff added to ultimatum some other people were suggesting that uh it gives vault temple maps which would make sense considering it's part of the corrupted theme um to talk about some nodes on the tree here this one over here just makes it so you can uh spawn the boss faster so this is a pretty solid one it also makes it so he drops a stack of catalysts now over here we've got uh maps have increased chance to be unique Maps have, or uh, not maps, sorry, the reward have in increased chance to be unique, which I think is good, especially with a double corrupt. This over here is divination cards. I don't know if I really like this. I was trying to see what I could get. I haven't really gotten anything out of it yet. Uh, I've gotten like some pledge of hands cards, but nothing too crazy. Down here, we've got chance to reward currency. This one I don't like because it's, it's basically pulling chisels. I wish they would make it so very basic currency does not pop up past like maybe round five, right? Um, let's see down over here. We have unique modifiers start a tier higher if possible chance to dupe I think this is mandatory um, Over here. We have the reduced radius each round But also you gain rewards as though you've completed an additional round This also stacks with the gilded scarab I believe which is really really good and then over here I just put one point into everything because I don't mind any of the events uh, This is like the protect the altar which is not bad when it's in conjunction with the shrinking zone because when the zone shrinks, there's less to protect, so the fire prolift can cover everything, right? Over here, we have defeat waves of enemies. Over here, we have just survive, and then we have stone circles. And then there's just chance at ultimatum. So again, like I said, overall, I'm pretty happy. I would like to see it maybe tweaked a little bit, but, you know, since everyone is hating on it, I, I can't imagine it gets nerfed. There's nothing to really nerf with it, so hopefully it can only go up from here. Anyway, again, I'm pretty happy to find something that my, like, RF build can run. That is not super, super, super mandatory on very high single target since the current league mechanic really promotes higher single target, right? So anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys all later. Also forgot there's a lot more currency I pulled. I just didn't sort everything. Like I have gotten over 400 chaos, for example, but... Again, that's kind of like fluff compared to some other stuff. See you guys later.